She's conquered the corporate world, sat on the boards of both John Keels and MAS. This incredible woman has now turned her attention to social causes like helping the differently abled and protecting the environment. Power Women is proud to present Sharmini Ratbatha. Hi, and welcome to ETV Power Women. It's a brand new season, it's season three. Um, you've heard the introduction to my lovely guest, um, so I'm just gonna welcome you to the program. Shamini, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Minali. And I'm gonna ask you, actually, when I read the research um, on you, what I found fascinating was that you started off wanting to be an architect and ended up being an incredibly successful accountant. I mean, how did that, how did that come about? Okay, uh, it's really a long story. Yeah. Uh, and the fact is that my family moved to Nigeria when I was very young. Yeah. I did all my education there, okay. barring actually a four-year stint in Sri Lanka. Yeah. But when I did my A-levels and I got into university in Nigeria to do architecture, my mom decided that we were going to move back to Sri Lanka. Okay. So this was in 1981, uh, over right. 30 years ago. <laughs> and the thing was, at that time, there wasn't a lot of options. I couldn't go into university in Sri Lanka. Okay. And uh, basically, everybody did an ac accountancy uh, okay, that was uh, like, certification yeah. or did marketing. So I chose accountancy because I liked right. maths. Okay. And uh, I started off uh, doing my SEMA. Yeah and uh, progressed from, from there. That. So really uh, uh, being an architect was just completely out of the question. question. So yeah. I thought, okay, let me just make the best of what I have. And I was incredibly lucky because I actually got into a firm yeah. that was in interior design okay. and construction. Oh, lovely. And so I you became still a management kind of... trainee in there. <laughs> so it was fantastic. It was a joint venture with a British company. Yeah. And uh, in that space, I found the fact that I did accountancy worked. Yeah. And it also gave me an opportunity to sort of look see at design this, yeah. and see a product that was beautiful. Wow. Uh, so I kind of fulfilled my needs at that in point. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. In doing both. And you know, you've had this incredible career. You've had, you know, it's you're sort of you've started off and you've really worked your way up. To, to right to the top. I mean, just tell us a little bit about that because I mean, you, you're incredibly successful. <laughs> I, I don't know about the successful bit, but the thing is, it's it's a story that yeah. sort of is a, a, an evolving career. And uh, the fact is, when I started off um, at Saracens, yeah, and I worked there, it was a small company. Yeah, I was able to see all sides of the operation. Yeah, and which is uh, so important because yes. it gives you a real kind of understanding how, how, how things work works. really yeah. yes and um, gave me the opportunity to work in the front side of the business yeah uh, then do the co-accounting bit I also decided in between to join oh. the government and okay. I joined the Sri Lanka Export Development Board which was yeah. actually a semi-private organization yeah and that gave me the opportunity to learn a lot more about policy right about how exports were promoted and how yeah. important it was for the country for for growth etc yeah and um, so uh, I worked there for a year, uh, got a good insight into what Sri Lanka was exporting, yeah. but decided that it was not where not I wanted really to make a yeah. career. <laughs> and I came back into uh, Saracens once again at a higher position, yeah. worked my way up there, and then uh, the company were planning, planned to move across to Singapore okay. because they felt that the environment in Sri Lanka was, was not, not conducive working. for their operations. So I decided to look for a job and I yeah. chose the export industry as one option. Yeah. And I applied to multinationals and I got this break at Unicella. Yeah. And that was in 1989 and uh, we were just one company at yeah. MAS then. And uh, my with goodness, about how they've 350 grown. <laughs> yeah, employees and today like there are about 30 or 40 companies yeah. in 10 countries That's and amazing. about 35,000 employees. So yeah. it's been a huge journey that they've had. And I've been very lucky to be part of because of that, right at the start yes. I mean yeah that's yeah and to be able to watch that grow was very very fulfilling yes mm -hmm. and 
at MAS, you know, I moved jobs every three years, yeah. either from one company to another or moved up the ladder. Yeah. So I've been FC, which is a financial yeah. controller. Then I've been a finance director, CEO, managing director. So really kind finance, of like, yeah. <laughs> and then moved through <laughs> the different sections. Oh. And I was part, part of the whole growing up of that uh, yeah. company and the industry too. So it was really fulfilling. Yeah. But what happened in between was that, uh, so I started a family. Yeah. In 95, I had my first son. Yeah. And at that time, I was a working woman working in Katanaik. I wasn't sure whether I really wanted to continue working. Yeah. But uh, I decided that, I, yes, I, I did. Oh, and I uh, wanted to continue working. And I had a great uh, home front. My mom was there to support me. Yeah. And actually my sister. Which really helps, especially uh, yes. so as a she, new. Yeah. My sister had three kids. Okay. I had two kids. <laughs> so my mom ran a small crash. <laughs> for all of us. So that helped us work. Yeah. Uh, my sister was a doc, is a doc it's actually. A doc, yeah. so, uh, so I continued working but uh, when my uh, yeah, elder son started to go to school yeah. I decided that I needed to spend more time, time with, with him. him because when they're young you, it's mostly the feeding, the washing and, and all, all that, that sort of, yeah. uh, thing of the babies but I think later on you need to That's spend important. a little bit more time. Yeah. So when my son became uh, five and he started off school, yeah. I realized that the job that I had was really quite hectic. I mean, yeah. It involved me in a lot of travel and I wanted to be With home him. more. And I told uh, my boss Mahesh that, you know, I wanted to move on. Yeah. And he told me, don't go away yet. Uh, why don't you take on uh, a job? and set up the corporate finance division. Okay. I said, as long as it's a half day job, I I'm will. Happy. Yeah. So I set about finding a CEO for the company I was running. Okay. Got that ma uh, uh, guy place, in place yeah. and then uh, moved on, set up the other division. So that was in 2001. Right. And uh, two years into the job, I realized that that had also grown so big that, that it, it needed was, a full-time person. Yeah. And I, since I was not prepared to do that, I said, you know, Mahesh, I think we need to find somebody <laughs> else to take this so, so we we got somebody else in yeah. and I stayed on on the main board uh, yeah. and um, basically did a non-exec kind of job. Yeah. And I've kept my association with MAS because I've yeah. been part of that whole journey. Yeah. So when they're looking at uh, diversification from the apparel industry, we're yeah. looking at investments outside the apparel industry. Yeah. I'm on that board as, well. uh, as a non-exec. Yeah. So I still continue in with, that role. Yeah. Which is uh, lovely actually, because la like yes. you said, you kind of helped yeah. see this journey of yeah. this small company into such a massive <laughs> organization and it's lovely that you're still part of it. Yes, it's really nice to be part of it. Uh, and uh, so when I stopped my full-time responsibilities, I realized yeah. that I just wanted to, though I was retired, yeah. I wanted to be involved in things. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine, actually two friends of mine, uh, encouraged me and said, why don't you come on our boards yeah. as non-exec. One was the Environmental Foundation. Yes. At that time, the chair was Dr. Lali Vikramanayake and okay. he was uh, very passionate about how uh, people should look at the environment yeah. and uh, influenced me uh, greatly um, in joining EFL. And the uh, other was Sunera Foundation, yes, which uh, right. Sunetra Bandaranayake is a founder that's also doing fantastic work. Tell us a little bit about the work that they do, okay. the Sunera Foundation. for uh, Sunera Foundation actually works with the differently abled. Right. There's quite a lot of kids and youth yeah. in Sri Lanka who who are marginalized yeah. because of the fact that, that they, they have are. disabilities. Yeah. And uh, what the Sunera Foundation provides for them is really uh, an opportunity yeah. to raise their self-esteem, okay. an yeah. opportunity to shine yeah. and uh, discover wonderful. their yeah. talents because they, they get so little uh, uh, options yeah, uh, for them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so, wonderful, and that must be so fulfilling as well to kind of be involved in, in you know, it is you know doing it, various projects like that. Yes, I'm not involved on the operations side of yeah. it, but you know, being associated with the organisation, yeah. helping steer it, helping support it, 
they run about 40 workshops across the island on wow. a weekly basis. Wow. So there's about 1,200 kids that That's lovely. Go That's in huge, yeah. Every week. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is you, when you think about it. Yeah. And so in a little way, we are doing something to help. And, you know, like all non-profits, it needs the support of yeah. people, you know, well-wishers. For it to carry its work so that's, uh, that's the scenario. part of the role that we have to play yeah. you know, making sure that the funds come, come in, in yes. continuously yeah. and tell me a little bit about the environmental foundation because you're the chair of that now and yeah. I mean and again that's doing so much work so much great work EFL is actually a 30 year old organization yeah. and it was started off by a couple of students law students right in 1981 in yeah. response to a need yeah. uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, they felt that we had very strong laws, okay. but in the implementation and the carry through of the laws, there, there were no... some gaps. Right. And uh, EFL played a role in uh, providing justice for nature because okay. it looked very much at the scientific, uh, uh, scientific uh, basis. Yeah for ensuring that the environment was protected, protected. yes. Okay. And not just saying that we must just do it yeah, because it should be done, but really this is trying to establish to why we needed to, to do it. support it, yeah. So a lot of things, and when we talk of environment, it's not just the natural environment, it's also the built environment. Yeah, It all relates to the well-being of people living in Sri That's Lanka. Right. So okay. it covers from water pollution, sound pollution, wow. to making sure that the forests are, are protected. Uh, protected. So there's a um, whole and also the species. gamut of... Totally, Wonderful. totally. Right, we've got to take a little break, but I'm, I'm really, really interested in hearing more about um, your foundation when we come back. So for all of you at home watching, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back after this short break with more from Sean. We'll see you then. Hi, and welcome back to ETV's Power Women. Um, before we went into a break, um, I was having a wonderful chat with Sharmini, actually, and we kind of left off, you were telling me about the Environmental Foundation, and what I wanted to ask you is, as the chair of that foundation, what is a typical day in the office like for you? As a chair, uh, I'm not entirely non-exec, right. which means that I do have a, a role to play in the okay. organization, yeah. but it's not a full-time role. Okay. Probably involves me having about five to six hours a week okay. at the office, okay. uh, a couple of days. Yeah. But if you were to take a month, yeah. you'll find me either at meetings where we're discussing an issue. Yeah. Uh, now, very recently, we had uh, an issue where we were looking at uh, some encroachments in a national park. Okay. And uh, we have a Sartre legal panel. Right. Various uh, people who come together. Yeah. And we sort of debate on how we need to tackle it. Okay. And uh, in this instance, we kind of took a different approach. Yeah. And uh, we tackled it in, 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 that, yeah. in that way. And okay. we, we were successful. So uh, it's a lot of brainstorming that yeah. happens. And then we are also looking at um, following through on any other cases that we have taken. Okay. I pretty much leave the running of the organization to the director operations okay. and the team. Yeah. Very passionate and committed people yeah. to make sure that everything happens accordingly. But um, I think the thing is that we need to get more people involved. Okay. People who, who can think, who have got specialist knowledge. And, and, the and that's the idea. I kind of bring them in together. Okay. Uh, so that we can present a different perspective to, to people. So I'm trying to do that. So that's really my role as at, a chair. At the yeah. moment. And have you always been sort of passionate about the environment? Has uh, environmental issues always been something that you've, you know, really wanted to kind uh, of... Yeah. Actually, no. Okay. You know, I was just like everybody else. Yeah. I thought the environment can take care of itself. Self. <laughs> and somebody was looking after it. Yeah. Uh, there's and somebody out there, but it's not me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And for really for 25 years yeah. during my working life, meaning there's nothing really going wrong that I knew about. Yeah. And uh, it was only later I realized that if we didn't get involved, that, that things would go horribly yeah, wrong. From bad to I mean, worse. Not in a doom and gloom way, but I think uh, that we don't realize how much we impact the environment. Yeah. 
and how much we require it. Yeah. Because now we all talk about the world, we all talk about countries, how the GDP is growing, yeah. you know, we want to get so many percentage growth. Yeah. But do we ever think about the earth and we do we ever ask, is the earth growing? Yeah. What? Or is it in recession? Yeah. And that's true. We don't yeah, you never think about really, it. Yeah. Yes. And scientists have actually put a value on okay. the services that the earth gives us okay you know from fresh water yeah. clean air uh, soil to grow our food yeah. all of this all of the stuff. things that we just take for granted. for granted yeah we do and they value it uh, you know at 33 trillion meaning twice as much as the world's gdp yeah. so uh, when you think about it <laughs> we've just undervalued this huge asset yeah. we have and we don't do anything to kind to, of uh, to it. grow yeah. it, yeah. And the thing is, the other 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 side of the equation is the population is growing. The yeah. needs of people are growing, and so we really need to take stock of which way we are going to uh, balance this yeah. and how individuals can actually, actually take a role. Which yeah. actually leads me on to my next question. Mm -hmm. There itself, how can individuals take a role? And I mean, what can we do? Um, at home or you know when we're out or whatever to sort of make sure that we're not adding too too much, too much yes. yeah putting yeah. too much stress or tax on on our on our on, on, the, on, world. The, on the world yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know it's it's kind of horrible meaning when you think about it yeah uh, if I were to say that we should start consuming less yeah we should live simpler lives Light. you know and then you see other people who are really really poor and yeah. they don't e get enough uh, and they're all striving to get better, yeah. uh, better, and, and better lives for themselves. You have to balance it actually. Yeah. So you have to think, uh, you know, how much is enough? Yeah. Uh, and if you're going on a race to get more and more and more, you're actually putting a lot of pressure and strain, uh, yeah. on the economies to provide what you need. Yeah. And sometimes you might just say, okay, we are satisfied with this level yeah. of income and uh, let us do look at doing the other things that support uh, the people who are less included right you know give them a better life yeah uh, what is happening now is that the rich are getting richer yeah and the poor are actually getting poorer yeah. and the there's no middle, the income yeah. uh, gap is just the disparity uh, is huge it's huge yeah so and it's ridiculous actually when you really think about it it's, it's absurd yes so. and, and people are people are really thinking is capitalism the right answer yeah. and, and I mean from what we're saying at the moment is <laughs> it doesn't seem to really be the, the way you want to move forward but uh, yeah. you know I, but I, I get that subjective yeah. I guess too yeah and the thing is so people need to kind of look inside them and think of what they're doing but now we're getting away yeah. from the environment but how it impacts the environment yeah. is that we put actually less uh, stress on, on it, it. Uh, by reducing our needs and then yeah. the thing is we start valuing the environment meaning if we start looking at how having clean water yeah. is impacted uh, by the fact that there's deforestation happening right you know if people make that connect they are going to look at their legislatures and say well you we know this to. is what is important to me this is yeah. what is important for me to live in Sri Lanka uh, so. Sri Lanka is really lucky because we have got 103 rivers 103 right. 104 rivers and uh, that ensures that we are going to be a water surplus country, uh, yeah. unlike a lot, a lot of people of that, yeah. in the world who don't get cle uh, clean, clean water, water and fresh water. So the thing is, we won't have this forever if we don't look after, look it, after yeah. our uh, you know, watershed forests. Yeah. So again, and we need to think of what is important. And I think people need to kind of learn a little bit more. Yeah. We can't go on life thinking, you know, we are unconnected from yeah. the earth. So I think what I would like people to do is maybe all the mothers out there, yeah. tell the children, you know, while it's important that you do things for people, that it's you do important. something uh, that... Give back uh, to the earth. Yeah, give, yeah, give back to the earth. The other thing that I wanted to ask you is, you know, because you kind of touched upon encroachment into sort of natural mm. areas and forest reserves and stuff. Do you see a lot of that happening um, yeah. in Sri Lanka? It's, yeah. it's quite prevalent, is it? Yeah, it is. It is. Wow. And so much so that we can't deal with the issues that really, come up. Really, the amount. Yeah. And have you know? Have you been quite successful? Or I want to sort of ask this, but in a very diplomatic way, <laughs> okay. do you find that there's a lot of red tape that blocks you when you sort of look at 
um, encroachment issues and, and, and other issues like that. Do you find that you have a lot of support or is it something that's quite tough to... Okay, it's, it's really not red tape. Okay. It's because they are, they're, they are breaking the laws. Right. Because encroachment means that you're breaking the law yeah. in some form or fashion. Um, in terms of pursuing them, I think if you present the evidence and you take it to courts... That's then, a quite a yes. high success rate. But, but the thing is that you have to go through the whole process. Okay. And it takes a long time. Okay. And uh, what happens is that uh, sometimes other issues come in the way, whether it's poverty, yeah. whether it's people who are growing uh, some food right. people find it difficult to evict people who are and uh, then they don't take action okay so I think people are looking at the smaller issues and Not. losing sight of the larger issue okay uh, in that yep. so I think the perspective that people take uh, As related to that is very important okay. well, it's a good place for us to take another little break <laughs> but um, for everyone watching at home don't go anywhere, we're going to be right back after this short break. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Power Women. Um, I've been having a really interesting chat with Sharmini and, and actually it's raised a lot of things about and um, just about different ways in, of looking at things. Like, you know, a lot of the stuff that you were talking about previously, you know, things I've never really sat down and thought about. So for me, it's been incredibly fascinating, as I'm sure it's been for everyone at home. Um, Charmaine, I want to kind of talk a little bit about your personal life now, okay. <laughs> kind of ask you a little bit about your family life and, and your husband. How did you meet? Where did you meet? Where did I meet? Um, I, uh, after I finished my SEMA, yeah. I uh, went to the University of Colombo to do an MBA. Right. And I met him there because okay. he had also decided to do an MBA at that okay. same time. Uh. And uh, we just met in class. Yeah. And uh, he, he dropped out of the MBA class because he okay. had a job that took him far away. Yeah. But we, we continued to meet. Okay. He was like my dancing partner. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> not, not fancy dancing, but you know, just uh, for dancers. Yeah. We used to choose his, uh, each other to go. Oh, and uh, so it was just friends, yeah. and then we met again, in '91 again, okay. uh. and uh, and then we started dating, yeah, and got married in six months' time. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Wow, how lovely! World in World in romance, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic! And you have two boys. I have two boys. And yes. um, are they are they quite passionate about the environment? Have they? Kind of now with the role that you're in, are they sort of more aware and more conscious? And well, they say Amy is talking about her environment <laughs> thing, but <laughs> I think at school they're a lot more aware. Yeah, and they're both studying at Royal. Yeah, and uh, they sort out their garbage. Oh, they do. They okay, don't wonderful. throw any wrappers on the ground. Yeah. I think the kids nowadays are a lot more, more disciplined. You see the parents littering much more actually. than the children. Yeah. So I think again they're more sensitized, yeah. and it's very encouraging that yeah. kids are more aware of, and of they are involved. And I mean, just talking about littering, like Colombo for me is a completely different place now. It's, it's just fantastic. it's amazing. Yeah. You know, you can happily walk on the roads and and yes. really feel proud of your city. Absolutely, it's and and also it just takes probably just three months once you get yeah. used to it it becomes a habit yeah. you will not throw something like yeah that. you know so, so it's I, just about I, changing I the mindset exactly, changing people's yeah. perception that's true so you know we need interventions yeah. to make people change their perspectives yeah. on things so hopefully we'll get a few more, more interventions. happening yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we will mm. so what do you do when you're not working how do you relax I read yeah I listen to music uh, watch TV, yeah. movies, uh. and uh, well, I also sort of have a hobby. Yeah, uh, I photograph my kids. Right. I actually make movies. Yes, that's right. All through, <laughs> and so I do some editing of those. Wow. And uh, the thing is, I don't think I have that much free time. Also, yeah. when I think about it, yeah. Because you know, there's housework to do, kids pick up, classes. Yeah. And so it's a bit hectic. You know, I. 
choose to have a little bit of time for myself. Yeah, which you be, have to. Yes. Otherwise, you like, go uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like maybe catch an evening out. Yeah. Um, let me do some holidays, so, yeah. you know, those are nice things nice. to do. And so tell us about these movies about your children. I understand that you have them on YouTube, or how did this whole thing start? Thing start off. <laughs> well, I like technology, so I, yeah. I like to explore different ways that, you know, the internet works to support you, yeah. you know, do different things. And um, so when I was making the movies, I mean, I just thought I can play them on the TV. Yeah. And then I realized that, you know, once you edit it, you can upload it. So I want to share it with my uh, brother who's in the States, right. things about the kids because he doesn't live their lives. Yeah. Uh, and with my uncles overseas also. So I decided to make a few movies yeah. and especially, especially they, they can get a flavor of life here. Yeah. But actually sort of got into a little bit more than I'm taking movies of the kids activities. Okay. Uh, really more now for, for the, for their groups. Okay. So, so they I have just a sort of don't focus on my kid but yeah. I focus on the whole group okay. and upload stuff so that they can use it for their records oh, or yeah. you know, uh, how, just to watch. How fascinating. <laughs> well we've got to take another little break on that point but um, when we come back actually we're gonna we're gonna listen to what uh, a couple of your friends and your family have to oh. say about you and it's uh, it's lovely actually I think you'll be very happy so we'll see you after this short break don't go anywhere we'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to ETV's Power Women. Um, I've been having a really interesting chat with Shamini Ratwatha. Um, she's the chairperson of the Environmental Foundation. Um, and we've come to that part of the show where you get to have a look at what your friends and family really feel about and think and feel about you. And it, it kind of, it gives the people at home a real insight in, into who okay. you are. So it's, you know, it's good it's, stuff. It's good stuff. Okay. I think you'll be pleased. So <laughs> let's take a look at it. All right. Shamini and um, we, uh, I have known her for a long time. We were in school together. Shamini, who's the brainy one, was uh, much more, you know, advanced in her career. So um, uh, that is how we started uh, this friendship. Recently, Shamini and I went on a pilgrimage together to India. So I just give you a, a sample of what what her ACTs are. So in one hotel, we ended up we didn't have any electricity, and so there was no air conditioning all night. So she's done her wash and everything and gone to bed, and I was with my torch going around or something. Now I'm sure she wanted to sleep and wanted me to switch off my torch. So she says, dear Ki, I think the torch emanates a lot of heat. So I think we need to switch it off because it's very hot. So, you know, so I said, it's one of your cock theories. So, <laughs> so I, I do wish her all the very best and to continue doing her good work, um, both as a wife, a mother and her career. First of all, I think she's a very accomplished person. She not only is brainy, like Dilki said, she, is, uh, she can cook, she can sew, she can sing, she can dance, and everything exceptionally well. So she's a multi-talented person, really. And uh, she's got a very soft heart. She's a very caring friend. My uh, earliest recollection of Shamini was uh, when she came to school, and uh, we had heard about this girl joining us from Nigeria. And she came into the class, kept her suitcase at the entrance and just slid it across the floor where it went and crashed against the other wall and off she ran to be with her cousins. You know, she was so fun-loving and uh, things like that. And also I think uh, something we are really very wary of is she doesn't know her left from her right. So when she gives directions, especially when you're in a car and she tells you to turn left, you can bet your bottom dollar you've got to turn left. Otherwise, she'll come up, like Dilke said, with a cock theory about how the building, which was the landmark, moved from the left to the right. You know, she has her own theory if she's wrong. <laughs> so, uh, things like that. She's really fun to be with and she's always a life and soul of a party. Well, another incident I remember with Shamini was when uh, we were in a Jap Japanese restaurant. And I'm not much of a Japanese uh, food person. But Shamini sort of convinced me to have this sushi 
and she said have this this is very nice and and put some wasabi on that and gave it to me I said just swallow it i just took one bite and then i was tearing and coughing and spluttering she watched me and she said too much wasabi you know and then in her one she takes half the quantity so i was used as the <laughs> guinea pig my <laughs> shamini those are the very mischievous she's got a very mischievous streak in her <laughs> I worked with Shamini now for maybe six, six, six years. Uh, we worked together at the Environmental Foundation Limited. And um, Shamini took over uh, at the Environmental Foundation at a sort of uh, delicate time. I think she has a capacity to, to think out of the box. Uh, she's willing to embrace new ideas quite easily. Uh, and uh, she's also able to work with a different range of people, you know, manage uh, a sort of variety of people. and i've been struck by her capacity to to sort of manage this sort of broad variety and range of people uh she also comes across to me as somebody who is willing to inspire young people uh she's also i think inspired all of us on the board uh she has this uncanny ability of being able to take us along with her in terms of in terms of the ideas um, that she wants to sell and propagate and use and so that's that struck me as also being quite impressive about ramini So all good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Exit the meter by the left and the right. <laughs> so well, basically, I'm never going to get into a car with you. <laughs> I think that's the bottom line. Yeah, I should say this side. This side. <laughs> well, we've got to take another little break, but when we come back, I'm going to ask you a series of dreaded questions, which are really not that dreadful, but we try and hype it up. <laughs> okay. I'll put okay. you on the spot when we get back. Um, so stay tuned for that. I've got a lot. Welcome back to the dreaded 10 segment of Power Women. Um this is where I get to put our guest on the spot and ask a, a series of questions. So I just want the first answer that kind of pops into your okay. head. <laughs> All right, are you ready? All right. Yeah, okay. Is the glass half empty or half full? Half full. Half full. Superb. Would you rather be a small fish in a big pond or a big fish in a small pond? Be a small fish. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you like to think. <laughs> What do you do to impress other people? I would just smile at them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where do you go to be alone? Well, the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> How many rings before you answer the phone? Depends on where my phone is. Okay. So usually 3. Yeah. And maybe maybe ten. more. <laughs> maybe more. Depends on who's calling. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> what would you say your biggest regret is? I don't have any. Okay. I mean, wow. I think life evolves and you know you have to enjoy every moment, moment and, of it. You know it doesn't last forever anyway. Yeah. Where do you find true inspiration? When I was a kid, you know, I I used to always look up at the sky and the trees and greens, kind of my favorite color. Yeah. I think I like to be, uh, you know, in a natural surrounding okay. where I see a sort of beauty yeah. around, and you know, it's just looking at something nice. So um, the kind of really yeah, wonderful. If you were suddenly granted three wishes, what would your first one be? Well, to find the truth about life. Okay. <laughs> do you love your enemies or do you love to hate them? <laughs> I I'm not I love my enemies. Yeah. yeah, because being it's just how we perceive them, isn't yeah. it? You know, you think somebody's an enemy because you don't probably understand well, their meaning. I I do have people I disagree with. Yeah. Hopefully you can turn them around <laughs> like to my way of thinking or understand I, what they feel. Well, okay. If you had a million dollars to donate anonymously, mm -hmm. um whom would you give it to? I give it to the environment. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much um for coming on. It's been actually been a real treat to have you um here today. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule and joining us. It's been a pleasure, you know, Adi. Thank you. And for all of you watching at home, um we will be back again same time next week. with another wonderful guest so don't forget to tune into that 
Um, but if you'd like to learn more about Sharmini uh, and her interview on Power Women, log on to our website at www.etv.lk and search for Power Women. And I'll see you next week. Bye.